Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today, we have two. First, we have Chris Voss, who's the president of the board of directors of the Commercial Fishermen of Santa Barbara. And we also have Ava Schulenberg. Welcome, both of you. So glad you're here. Thank you so yeah. much for having us. <laughs> So commercial fishermen of Santa Barbara, I bet there are people that don't even know there is such a thing. <laughs> and yet here we have the pier and the harbor and lots of fish going on. So tell us all about your organization. So it's a nonprofit obviously and uh, the board is made up of fishermen that participate in a variety of different fisheries. So we get good representation from the entire community which is made up of different uh, activities. Like each, each fisherman has a different um, uh, activity like a trap fisherman or a gillnet fisherman. So uh, there's a variety of, of units within the broader unit of the commercial fishermen in Santa Barbara. So your board has representatives from all of those. That's right. How many, so how many different mm, sort of groups are there? About six or seven. Okay. Yeah. And what we try to do is pick issues that all of us could get behind collectively. But at the same time, if one interest group, one fishing uh, uh, group has specific challenges, we as an association will try to help them address those challenges in, in representing their interests at the state or even at the federal level in some cases. Wow, so yeah. you, so you re help represent at the state? Yes. You folks, are, <laughs> you folks are doing a lot of, Lots of work that I bet people don't know about. <laughs> yeah. We go to a lot of meetings, yeah. You go to a lot of meetings? I go to yes. more meetings than most fishermen. I yeah. think. All right, and so the thing I find interesting, I found this out on your website, is that you not only involve all of the different types of fisher people, but you um, you care about the, the quality, the health of the ocean and, and all of that. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'll start by saying that <clears throat> in Santa Barbara, we're super fortunate to have so, uh, uh, so robust fishing grounds. We have really incredible um, access to the Channel Islands uh -huh. and then the coast and then Cal uh, California bends at Point Conception uh -huh. and we get incredible mixing of nutrients so we have uh, a variety of different species. Santa Barbara is unique in the variety of species that are landed here and over time uh, we've had in, uh, uh, the urchin fishery, Santa Barbara was the largest uh, producing port in the state for a while and so there's there's been these periods of time when our production has been ex exceedingly high. Right now, we're the largest lobster producers in the state, too. Uh, the so largest lobster producing in, port the in the state? Yep, that's right. And uh, that should be, and it should no be noted that the fishery itself only happens from Point Conception to the Mexican border. Of course, there's a Mexican lobster fishery, too, over the border in Mexico. But because of the water temperature, it's just from Point Conception to the Mexican border for California. Water temperature. Yeah, it did. So does the water de temperature determine what kinds of fish are in our area? Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So other places, I don't know, like San Diego or any other place that has uh, a harbor, then do they typically get just fewer types of fish there? Uh, to some degree, yeah. Yeah. It, it, to a certain extent. Because we're in such a dynamic mixing environment of warmer and colder water, colder water coming from the northern and central part of the state and, and warmer water coming up from um, the south, we get, uh, we get a more uh, significant number of different species here in Santa Barbara. Wow, I, don't, I didn't know that. Special place. <laughs> yes, it's, it well, is. yeah, we it know is. that part, but I didn't know <laughs> about this. So um, tell us about well, I know that every Saturday there's a, there's a market, and I know that there's a harbor festival that happens once a year. So tell us about that. Well, I manage the Saturday Fisherman's Market, which has been going on for decades. <laughs> and I actually worked at it when I was a young girl with my dad, which was really, really? sweet. It was my first job when I was about three or four years old. Oh, and so now to be working at it again and to be managing it is 
really full circle, so it's very important to me. Um, but it's also just a great opportunity to shake the hand of the person who caught your food, you know? Mm. And, and there are people that come every Saturday that you build these personal relationships with. It really is like a family. And for anyone who has never been, we welcome new people every week. Every Saturday, someone comes down and says, you know, I've lived here for 50 years and I never even knew this existed. How wonderful. And then they get hooked on it and come back every week and see oh, us. God. So it's a really special community. And I think we've lost touch of the sourcing of our food as a society. So to have this amazing market in our small town where you can still have those relationships and get really fresh healthy local seafood yeah. it's a great great opportunity I recommend anyone going and checking it out whether you eat seafood or not it's still really yeah. fun yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's a good time the kids love it it's super great and then the harbor festival is something that takes place that's put on by the waterfront department every october and it's right after uh, lobster season opens so it's usually about the second weekend in october right after the season opens and our job at CFSB is to manage the lobster boiling station, which is where you know we take everyone's product that they've purchased and we boil it right there so you can pick out your live lobster, get it boiled and cooked, and then go take it and eat it somewhere in the harbor while enjoying the music and whatever oh, else is wow. going on. It's really what fun. <laughs> it's super fun. And last year was the first year that it um, took place in 2022, obviously since COVID took place. And um, it was just, I mean, people came out <laughs> in such large masses. Really <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful for people of all ages, from people all over the world. I mean, people were really involved and it was a wonderful experience. It always is. So mark your calendars so for that. <laughs> beforehand or do you just show up? No, it's free access. Up. You just, oh, just it's all free. It's all free. Yeah. You just show up. The food and the drinks cost money, but you know, yeah, if you sure. if you want to just walk on in, there's no barrier to entry, which is great. And there's all these vendors selling stuff. It's it's a great time. So Yeah, I've been there before. It is wonderful. <laughs> Very fun. There's a lot going on. Right. And our I think that people are generally drawn to the seafood, the local seafood, and to meet the fishermen. And it's really great marketing for the Saturday market as well, because people think, oh, this kind of thing should happen all the time. And then we tell them, well, it sort of does on a much smaller scale yeah. every Saturday at the Saturday Fisherman's Market. One of our missions as an association is to try to create a greater and a stronger connection between us as producers of locally caught seafood and uh, with the community itself so we can mm -hmm. you know shorten the supply chains and try to you know try to make sure what we produce is consumed locally that's one of our goals and objectives and we're awesome. obviously the Saturday Fisherman's Market is part of that mm -hmm. successful aspect of it yeah and so you um, market to the local restaurants for example right you market yes. your Fisherman's yes too. and yeah. there are local fish buyers uh, that buy our product but then get it directly into the, the, the local stream too. Mm -hmm. So we work with... Um, oh, so the buyers come yep. and get it and then they sell it to the restaurants? Is right, some do it that and way. some do it that way, but yeah. the guys on the pier are all direct marketing their own catch. Right. So that's right. A, right. You know, another means for guys to, you know, to achieve that objective when right. fishermen market their own yes. catch directly to the public. Plus then you get to meet, as Abel was saying, you get to meet the guy that caught your fish, mm -hmm. which is a you know, yeah. kind of good thing. That is Farmers good market, thing. same thing, but it's valuable. Right, it's a right, really right. important thing. Mm -hmm. I think one time I heard you suggest that um, people should ask, uh, when they go into a restaurant and they're going to have fish, oh, where did you buy the fish? Mm -hmm. And um, so the other day I was in a local restaurant and the waiter came over and I ordered salmon or halibut or something. and. Um, I said, oh, where, where did, did you, you buy this it? fish? <laughs> and he said, from the folks at the harbor. Well That's done, wonderful. That's the good. local great people. Job. I <laughs> thought, <laughs> man, yeah. it's yeah. great that they did that. And it's yep. great that he, a waiter, Was knew that. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, it's, it's That's such an good. easy thing that you can do as a local patron at a restaurant. If you want to you know, make sure that the food that you're eating is locally sourced, if you just ask your waiter or waitress, where did you get this from? And they happen to tell you, or they don't know. You know, it's just important. The education yeah. piece is very important. And there's this broader, bigger vision of it in that um, 
we that you don't know what other countries are doing with mm -hmm. respect to managing their marine resources uh -huh. and we have really rigorous sustainability goals and objectives around our harvest our take out of the ocean so mm -hmm. when you're buying it from another country which there's this um, statistic around it we import about 80 percent of what we consume and we export about 80 percent of what we produce and that that's a ridiculous dynamic that that's crazy. should and if we're importing fish that are being harvested in ways that are environmentally destructive mm -hmm. well, that's, we're that's not a great that. thing so you can be pretty confident that if you're buying something from locally produced uh, fishermen you know from fishermen that are catching it locally it's managed really really well california is the most regulated yeah. highly regulated yep fishery in the state so yeah. um, I mean in the country it's right. the most highly regulated state in the country so yeah. we set the standards so, so give me an example of something that would be unacceptable or unhealthy or unproductive farmed well, <laughs> a, a lot of the farmed species are done mm -hmm. it's done in ways that aren't necessarily you know mm -hmm. real sound and it's often in really like I don't want to badmouth too many other things, but tilapia or oh. farmed shrimp, that's, those are some of the huge things that we import from other countries that don't have a lot of controls on how they're done. Even though in, in those cases, those are land-based production, but the quality of what you can get can be drawn into question. Or if um, you're, you know, the tuna fisheries are still um, not na um, internationally managed. They're working on it, they're getting closer and closer, but in some parts of the world, they're overexploited, and so you could be getting tuna or swordfish from a region of the world where they're being over uh, over harvested. And and in our case, um, our tuna and our swordfish are being um, really, really sustainably harvested right. through all kinds of gear restrictions and uh, seasons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gosh. So when you go to the grocery store, and you you know usually at Trader Joe's, they have farmed tilapia is a really popular product that I've seen and then right next to it it'll say wild local salmon or something like that just go for that option and I know sometimes there's a you know a difference in price which can make your decision that much harder but when you choose something exactly. that's wild and more sustainably caught you're doing a lot better than <laughs> when you purchase the farmed option from a country you don't even know where it's from so, so you think when they say that it's wild and locally caught that it's true <laughs> well, there's, uh, there's, there's certain NGOs, environmental NGOs, mm -hmm. that are trying to get at that question. So oh. we've helped consult with some of those organizations in an effort to uh, pursue a strategy, maybe a legislative strategy mm -hmm. where they want to change the laws around labeling so oh. that it is more accurate so that you're not misled and you're buying something that is in fact what it says it is. And so mm -hmm. um, some of the bigger challenges are farm salmon versus wild caught salmon. That's a big one. Globally, that's a big issue. And, um, and so uh, to, to make certain that wild is labeled wild and farmed is labeled farmed, uh, that's been now established. Um, and so that's a, a step in the right direction so that we're not, we're more informed as consumers as to the, the details of how that you know how that resource is being managed because our our salmon fisheries from Alaska they are really really well managed oh. yeah most of our salmon comes now from Alaska and that when this year in California the salmon season was closed oh yes I read about that yes. and I thought about you guys yeah. yeah everyone's quite bummed about that that's not due to over exploitation <laughs> that's due to habitat degradation mm -hmm. right that's not because we caught all the salmon. It's because <laughs> the rivers have all been diverted, mm -hmm. and the you know the amount of opportunity for them to go up those spaces and, and, and spawn has been eliminated over time. So that's not so much well, you know we caught too many. Yeah. That's they they don't have an opportunity <laughs> to spawn. Yeah, that's that's all of our fault because we're all using that water and consuming the lettuce or you know almonds or whatever else is you know being produced with the yeah. water that would have normally gone to support those fisheries. I get it. Okay, so let's let's switch gears and talk a little bit about uh, volunteers. You guys use volunteers sometimes, like for the Harbor Festival. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So a person could find out about that by going to your website, for example. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, they can reach out to Great. me online. There's contact information on there where you can submit a message. And typically we recruit volunteers on a case-by-case -case basis for events, you know, such as the Harbor Festival. Last year we had 
Almost 20 volunteers, and it was wonderful. A lot of you know high school kids who are getting their uh, community service hours oh, completed, great. which I think is wonderful, and it's a great opportunity for the youth in this town to you know be in touch with their harbor community. Um, and so that's just one example. But we also do fundraisers. Last year we did an event to raise money for Ukraine, and we had. I don't even know how many volunteers there were for that. We had a lot, lot maybe night. even a hundred volunteers, yeah. and it was a wonderful community gathering where everyone was working and, you know, just heads down, really putting in a solid effort to to really support this great cause. It was um, uh, in collaboration with World Central Kitchen. Yes. And, and Jose Andros. Yes. Wow. So we do events of all different kinds, but um, volunteers are always welcome. We do cleanups all the time. We just did a cleanup with. SB Channel Keeper um, a few weeks ago, and um, you know we had volunteers on both sides. We had fishermen that volunteered with us, mm -hmm. and then uh, Channel Keeper had uh, recruited a bunch of volunteers to help work on the beach as well. So we were on the boat, and then people on the beach, we were working together. And it's really, again, another great opportunity to learn more about our local fisheries and how you can do your part yeah. to keep the beaches clean. So you know, volunteers are always welcome. Those inquiries can come to me directly. I'm happy to reach out. Yeah, so they can, there's probably a contact us phone there number yes. on your website. They could call <laughs> and talk to you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's or it's come see me on a I'm there every week. And oh, are know, you? I'd be happy to chat about opportunities anytime. I'm there every Saturday. It's easy to find me. I'm usually yeah. just in the harbor. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Oh, that's right. a great point. That yeah. sounds like fun. And while a person is on the website, they could make, I bet, a financial donation. That would be fantastic. We do a lot of really good work, and I think, you know, this community, um, you know, we, we work hard on, uh, to do good things across the board. We also did, just a little another note, we um, received funding from local philanthropic uh, organizations uh -huh. to, at, at the beginning of the pandemic, because the restaurant market disappeared, because all the restaurants closed, oh, we got money to buy fish from fishermen, mm -hmm. then process it into a, a, a form that was accessible, uh, uh, acceptable by the food bank, and then delivered that fish to the food bank that then was distributed to the needy throughout the county. Oh my gosh. So we, we were story. proactive in trying to do two things at once, benefit our community, and then benefit the broader community. That was brilliant. You guys are creative. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Worked out um, well. Mm -hmm. Give me another example of um, some issue that might affect all the, the fishing uh, groups that you would go to Sacramento and, and advocate for. So, okay, I think I can go to, right now, um, the state's making a strong push for offshore wind. And the fishing communities up and down the coast, some of which are really directly impacted, like in Humboldt, uh, in Eureka, and then in uh, Morro Bay, with the actual um, lease sales right off of the port, and then the, all the infrastructure to bring electricity from offshore wind uh -huh. to the beach. And the concern around that uh, on the fishing community side is the loss of the area in the ocean that we formerly were able to fish, as well as the infrastructure that comes to the beach and takes up space. It takes up space in the, in, in the water uh, where the cables run to the beach, but also at the dock where all this new support is going to be required to service the offshore wind turbines. And so we're kind of um, bracing and trying to negotiate, navigate what we think or not think, we know will be real significant impacts to the community. And so um, we're working with state lands and the Coastal Commission and uh, other agencies, as well as you know, federal agencies, yeah. uh, BOEM, Bureau of Ocean Energy Man Management, and then um, the federal fisheries managers are all concerned about the impacts that taking area uh, out of the ocean is gonna have on their ability to manage sustainably. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it's complicated, it's a complicated uh, dynamic. So, with the turbines, then you can't fish because of all the wind? Well, because of uh, the actual units themselves. Oh, they oh, each oh. take up about a square mile each. Oh, uh, gosh. And, and the, leases, really? the leases total to date, which are the two real small uh, areas that have been designated so far, a total of 600 square miles of ocean, which are hopefully uh, projected to generate 
uh, three to five gigawatts, but the state's goal is to create 25 gigawatts. So you can say, okay, 600 square miles for three to five. So you're looking at like yeah. 3,000 square miles yeah. of the ocean to meet the state's overall objective of 25 gigawatts of offshore wind. So it'll ultimately have a pretty profound impact on the ocean space. And this is all in federal waters. So it's, it's um, you deep. know, it's oh, deep. Very deep. And whale entanglement. And whale entanglement. Oh, no. That's another big issue that, that has impacted the northern part of the state and the Dungeness crab fishery. So there's there's a, a bunch of really significant things mm -hmm. that um, that we're kind of trying to address in ways that are you know super constructive. There's there's things guys can do, and the state's working with fishermen to try to lower the likelihood of whale entanglement in in yeah. in certain kinds of gear. And so that's a that's a, a different issue, but. They're connected because some, you know the grounds are going to be shrinking, and there's you know as as you push people one direction, you know the whales they've been going in and out, and yeah. there's been uh, influences in the environment that uh, a few years back pushed a bunch of whales close to the beach, which led to a real spike in whale entanglement. So oh. there are these environmental conditions and and you know spatial spatial challenges between offshore wind and where where we fish and where the whales need to go and even shipping and then the military and you bring all these forces into play and it, it gets pretty wild fast. Wow, and yeah. here you are right in the middle of it saying, hey you guys. Hey you guys, exactly. Don't forget about the fish. That's it. We need to yeah. <laughs> These small, we're a bunch of independent small businessmen that are just saying, hey, right. listen, don't forget about us. And there, I think because of our history in Southern California dealing with oil with all the platforms out there and the pipelines yes, that are yes, associated yeah. with them and then the, the traffic that was in part we have a uh, kind of a, a pattern of be or a, a way to address the challenges that kind of industrializing the offshore waters um, can create and so there are there are well-worn pathways that we can make sure we go down in relationship to the impacts off what offshore wind is going to have on us i think we in Santa Barbara are so lucky to have you guys. And Thanks, I'll bet Sam. a lot of people don't know. Yeah, the issues, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot There's we're a going lot. up against, yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I know one of the things you're trying to do is to help people find out about all that. Right. Yep. <laughs> and maybe yeah. at the Harbor Festival, do you, I don't know, do something to try to educate the public? Yeah, we've historically had a booth mm -hmm. but that, and then, you know, I engage with people on a regular basis too, because I'm usually in the boiling station trying to right. uh, coordinate that. But um, usually, I have a table as well. Yeah, yeah. an information know, table. Because all kinds of nonprofits are on the pier, so you can right. talk to the sanctuary people. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, all the government agencies are usually on the pier too. So mm -hmm. the, that yeah. festival is, you know, brings everybody together. Yeah. Well, Great learning we opportunity wait for that. I know. So we have about a minute left. Any anything else you want our audience to know about commercial fishermen of Santa Barbara? Well, come on down to the Saturday Fisherman's Market. Yes, yes. And bring, a container. Should I bring a container. Bring a container. We've got bags and ice if you need okay. it. People regulars bring down their own coolers all the time, but yeah, but you it know. doesn't hurt to bring something watertight so that you know if you, you yeah. come down and. Yeah. Your vehicle it doesn't make a mess. Yeah. Otherwise, and there's a fillet station there too. Right. So you can buy a round fish and then have it filleted so that what you're leaving with is something you can put right in the pan. So right. somebody could do it for you. No mess. That's right. Yeah. All those guts and bones That's and right. things yes. out. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You know it's fresh when it's you're going straight and getting it filleted like that. And you right can take there. it home right, right there. Yeah. Which is really wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all the important work you're doing that benefits us and that people probably don't know about, and I hope they're <laughs> gonna watch us and find out about it. I hope so. Thank and you for thanks for us. coming on the show yes. to tell us all about it. Thank you. We appreciate you. the opportunity. Yes, thank you, Sunder. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.